I think the Apple Vision Pro is going to be really good. Are you serious? No, it's not. You saw the same thing that I did. You gotta admit it, it's cool. It's not even that cool. And you saw how much it costs. Dude, you're not seeing it. This is gonna change the world. It's a gimmick. It's just a gimmick and you know it, really. Do you think a gimmick would really go this far? Yes, and you know why? Because this whole thing is a joke. It's a computer is right in front of your you face. Are it is right shut here. up, you shut up. You are completely you can't wrong. See it at all. Ever since the Apple Vision Pro was announced, the public's reception has always been quite divided. Even when it finally came out, people still don't really know what to make of it. And now it's been two and a half months since the Apple Vision Pro came out, and people are really finally starting to grasp on what this headset is really trying to do. I've seen the public reception and exactly what the Apple Vision Pro has to offer, and I think I can come up with a pretty good conclusion on how to summarize this headset. However, there's still a lot to unpack. So many factors, ideas, and concepts just really are combined together into this headset. I think this is a good time where the waves have finally started to calm down and I can really go into the aftermath of this headset and to really see the perception of Apple's new VR headset or AR headset, XR, spatial computing, whatever this thing is trying to be. But first, I'm gonna take a little step back, specifically back to June 5th, 2023. Back to when this headset was first revealed. Yeah, people knew that Apple was making a headset, but they didn't really know what kind of headset it was really going to be. They would say it was going to be a really powerful headset that was really going to focus on putting the virtual world and the real world together. And people were pretty impressed on what they saw. But then they would later find out that this thing would cost $3,500. Or $500. And I'm just going to let the crowd speak for itself. Apple Vision Pro starts at $3,500. Yeah, not really a warm welcome, is it? After this announcement, we really didn't get any more information on this headset. But then on January 19th, 2024, they would announce pre-orders would finally start. And to when this announcement was made, to when the headset launched, it was estimated that this thing had 200,000 pre-orders. This number was much higher than Apple was expecting. So even despite the huge price tag, people just really wanted to get their hands on this headset no matter what. And on February 2nd, 2024, this headset was finally released. So 200,000 headsets sold right off the bat seems really good, but it's actually not as good as you think. And that's because Apple would actually let you return the headset for the first two weeks after its release. You'd return the headset and get your money back. And this number was actually really big. The number comes up to about 45% of people who pre-ordered it did this. So if we take that 45% out of 200,000, that would then leave us 110,000 people who kept the headset after the two weeks. And yeah, this was a big chunk, but Apple was expecting this. But then after the two weeks, the return rate went all the way down to only 1%, mainly because you wouldn't get all your money back if you did. But even so, 110,000 units sold right off the bat is still really good. Compared to other headsets, this is still really high. But $3,500 is still a lot of money. And if you wanted to buy the one terabyte version, that'd be about $3,900. So why were there so many pre-orders even though this costs so much money? And there are a few reasons for this, but I think I can narrow it down to a few. One of them being its crystal clear visuals and its powerful mixed reality technology. And it was so crystal clear because of the high resolution that it came with. And when I say the resolution was huge, it's huge. To really put it into perspective, you can see in this diagram how resolutions of other headsets compare with each other. You can see that the Quest 2's resolution per eye is 1832 by 1920. You can see this depicted in the square that's in gray, and this just pales in comparison to the Apple Vision Pro, and its resolution per eye is 3660 by 3200. And you can see that depicted in the square that's in the grossest color they possibly could have chosen for this diagram. But even so, even I don't have to tell you how big of a difference this is. Apple really was trying to push their limits with this. When people first put on this headset, most of them say how great the visuals are and how outstanding the colors look. And this is even further enforced with the pancake lenses that they use. These lenses are different from what the Quest 2 has. And yeah, there are positive and negatives between both of them, but most modern headsets now are switching to these pancake lenses, mainly because they're much thinner than Fresnel lenses, and the quality is just a little bit better. And speaking of pancake lenses, the pancake lenses are the main reason why this headset is just so thin. So looking at it from the side, it doesn't really look like it's that thin. But what if I told you that this cloth part on the front right here is only just the face covering? The true headset is this metal part right here at the front. So yeah, this headset is really compact and optimized. So since it's so thin, it must be really 
really light, right? Well, surprisingly, no. It's not heavy by any means, but when we compare it to the Quest 3, most of the material made on the Quest 3 is pretty much plastic. Meanwhile, the Apple Vision Pro's material is mostly made out of glass and aluminum. These materials are higher quality, but they are also heavier, which makes the Apple Vision Pro about 650 grams. Meanwhile, the Quest 3 is only 515 grams, so that's about a difference of 135 grams. Even though the Apple Vision Pro is heavier, most people probably wouldn't be able to tell a difference unless they were using them side by side. But as long as it has a good counterweight, it shouldn't really matter too much. Which I guess the Apple Vision Pro didn't get that memo. The head strap for the Apple Vision Pro is actually really big on the back. It just really tries to cover the back of your head. But there's no strap that goes on the top of your head. And most people who have used this strap say that it really isn't that good and it really makes the headset front heavy. But it's almost like Apple knew that this head strap was going to be bad. And for some reason they had a second one. This strap would actually go on the back of your head and also onto the top of your head. This one is the more favorite of the two. But there are a lot of people who don't like either and just wish they had an alternative. Which, sure, you can do that and wait until more third parties come out, but people already bought this really expensive headset. They're really not going to want to spend any more. But this issue does extend more to every other headset, and I speak for all of us when I say they really just need to put in a good strap to begin with. I really don't want to see this trend being more normalized. But back to the topic at hand. So the the comfortability of this headset is pretty mixed, and the materials used I've said are good but there is still a little issue. And I'm talking about the glass part that they use for this headset. And there are some specific headsets that may be defective or have some type of problem with them, which is normal for when they first launch. But there is one that sticks out and that's on the Apple Vision Pro. There are some people that have reported that a line just appears on the front of the headset, even though they didn't do anything. And the line is always in the same place, just right in the middle. And it's still unknown exactly what causes this. Some people have said that they've been able to get a full refund, which is good, but then there's other people who've said to replace the front, they've had to pay $800. And paying that much just to fix the front is just really not worth it. Hopefully the majority of the people who have this problem get it fixed with no extra charge. But let's move on and talk about who this headset is really made for. And the best way I can really describe it is it's a jack of all traits, but a master of none. They say you can do a lot with it. You can watch movies, watch YouTube videos, play games, use it for work, all kinds of things. But all of these are just kind of lackluster and they're just not practical. Like for instance, they say you're able to play games on this thing, but it's not like any of the normal VR games. Like you can't just boot up Half-Life Alex on this. Even though I have seen some videos where people use the Apple Vision Pro to play games, but they must have jumped through a lot of hoops because I'm not sure how they did this. In other games like Beat Saber, Asgard's Wrath 2, Gorilla Tag, you can't play any of these. The only games you can really play are just these half-baked clones of other games. And sure, more games will be developed later for this system, but as games go, that's really about it. And a big negative about this headset with games is just it comes with no controllers at all. Everything has to be dealt with your hands, which yeah, it can be useful and cool, but there's just something about a controller and just really pressing buttons that just makes the experience way more smoother. And a headset will have a much easier time tracking controllers than having to track your hand. And some people have said that the hand tracking can be a little inconsistent at times. So are there any other games that you can play? You'd be able to connect the headset to a PS5, and you'd be able to use a PS5 controller and play it on the Apple Vision Pro while using the pass-through, but it's just a flat screen, and it's just not, like, real VR. So if people who play games don't really have options, how about people who just like watching movies and videos? And there's nothing wrong with what it does with that. It plays movies and videos really well. And once again, the resolution is really good, so it looks really nice. And it's really good for a solo experience and to really be in awe, but what if you want more people to watch with you? Sometimes it's just better watching movies together than just by yourself. And obviously people can't see the movie you're watching when you have the Apple Vision Pro on. And it's just extremely cheaper just to get your friends together and get like a flat screen for like $500 and watch a movie together. So I guess the Apple Vision Pro is just perfect for people who just don't have any friends and who are just willing to cough up $3,500. So watching movies with the Apple Vision Pro isn't a bad experience, it just has its issues. But the Apple Vision Pro is also advertised for used for work. And how is that experience? I may sound like a broken record here, but it also has its issues. It was demonstrated that you'd be able to connect it to a Mac and you'd be able to put on multiple monitors. Which, yeah, that's pretty good, but what if you don't have a Mac or any other Apple products? Because it's strictly only used for Apple products. You can't go to any random desktop and just add another screen. So in a way, it's almost lacking features if you don't have other products to help it. So if you don't have a Mac or any other Apple products, then how is working with just the Apple Vision Pro by itself? 
and um, I think the experience, I haven't tried it, but it just looks bad. Let's just say you have to type a letter or you have to type on a Word document. Good luck with doing that without a keyboard. Sure, you can use it to type a little simple text, but your words per minute is gonna drastically decrease. And as far as the work side goes for this whole headset, I genuinely believe that nobody is going to use this for work. It's more practical just doing your work on a Mac. And if you just really want a second monitor, you can just go and buy one for less than $100. The Apple Vision Pro is just trying to appeal to everybody, but at the same time, that makes it appeal to nobody. So then, who is this headset even made for? Like, this can't just be made for everybody. Like, they gotta have some type of demographic. And I have an answer for this. The real audience for this headset is developers. That's the main issue with this headset. It's just not fleshed out enough and we need more people to help build onto it. Cause it's just so easy to give an eye roll to this headset and just think no one's gonna buy it. But the truth is Apple really doesn't care if you buy it or not. In so many ways, this headset is just so reminiscent back to the first ever Rift in 2013. That being the development kit one. Because the development kit one wasn't meant for everybody. It was specifically meant for developers. That's why the word development is in the name because they needed developers to get their hands on this technology and get some ideas. It's almost as if the headset is the base and the developers are the bricks. In order to place bricks, you need a foundation, which this is exactly what the Apple Vision Pro is. This is our base, and now developers need to place the bricks. In a way, it's almost like we've come full circle with these headsets. The only main difference is just who they're marketed to. And I've seen a few things with developers are working on already. I've seen videos where coins are on the ground and you have to vacuum them up. Just a nice little way just to make your chores a little bit more bearable. And I've also seen educational purposes too, like a very detailed heart in 3D where you can move around and you can really see the anatomy, which then helps people just get a better understanding on what they're really trying to learn. And here's one that I just found that was really cool. You're able to play a virtual game of chess with someone. I just find it really interesting how creative people can be with this technology. Now I'm going to give my whole conclusion on the Apple Vision Pro. But first, I just quickly want to say if you really like my content and if you've enjoyed this video so far, I would suggest subscribing to the channel. I would really appreciate it if you did and if you don't want to, eh, fair enough. So if I could summarize this headset in the least amount of words I can, I'd have to say it's a work in progress. The Apple Vision Pro gets updated pretty frequently, each update making it just a little bit better. Like for instance, the digital avatar that shows up when you FaceTime people. A while ago, the avatars used to look kind of creepy and kind of off-putting. But as slowly as updates have come out, this technology has gotten better and has started to really improve. And things are only going to get better with time. And yeah, many people are not going to buy this headset. But how many people bought the first iPhone when it came out back in 2007? Not many, because it really wasn't that different from a normal phone. But as new features get added, the technology improves, and when new versions of the iPhone come out, sales just keep going up, 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 and up. And the only way we were able to get there was with the first iPhone. And that's what the Apple Vision Pro is really trying to be. It's a stepping stone of what we will have later. The Apple Vision Pro is just testing the waters and trying to figure out what works and what doesn't. And maybe a few years down the line, we'll get something really extraordinary. Maybe in two years, maybe in 10, who knows. But at least it's nice to see that Meta actually has a good competitor and may actually give Meta a run for their money. Well, if Apple decides to stay out of trouble, because I know Apple sure loves to do that. But there is one thing that I'm sure of, and it's that I'm sure excited to see what Apple does next. And not just Apple, but everybody else. And who knows, maybe the next real big thing to really shake VR is just right around the corner.